So I started Mandara as soon as I came back from Nilbagh, about 1977 or 8, 1978 I think. And, uh, we registered it as a society, with David also was one of the trustees and we had a group of friends, we were all part of the trust. I was the my director and we set up a team in, uh, for working with children and also looking at some research studies, looking at uh, documentation, looking at uh, helping adults, field activists, teachers. So, a lot of different areas we felt were needed at that time. So, we set it up for that and we gathered people who were interested. felt that, uh, that we needed to review our work and ActionAid also wanted me to join them. So I also felt that uh, if a review is done first and then we can, I can go to ActionAid, that would be better both for ActionAid and for, and for Mandara. So ActionAid uh, invited Sharda Jain uh, from Jaipur, she was working then based in Jaipur and uh, invited her to do an evaluation of Mandara. Ji, good afternoon. Uh, we met in uh, 1984 when you first came to do the yeah. Mandara evaluation. Yeah. yeah. So, can you talk about how that perhaps influenced your work in Rajasthan and not only your work, but the others yeah, also? I think, Amukta, it's an absolute delight to see you again. Uh, of course, we've been meeting, but as a professional work, I think. Mandara evaluation was my first entry into this land and it has really influenced a lot of work that I've done and I'm so glad that we are here today to again take stock of what we have learned and how it can help us now. So uh, I'd be very happy to share as to... I brought this book file which was given to me. Oh, would you like <laughs> to sign it? Yeah, this is uh, oh, the kind of typewriter we had and where do you want me to sign? I think it's here. Oh. <laughs> okay, there also. Here? Hmm. Okay. I think it doesn't. Yeah. I won't write the date. <laughs> so it was, for me, it was quite an eye opener that there was something like this going on at Mandara. And I was, this was the first evaluation that I had ever done. 1984 and I didn't know how to wrap it up. I was actually quite nervous about the whole exercise. But when I came back, the person who influenced, uh, was very highly influenced by this exercise was Anil Bodia. See, I was trying to wrap up things and clean up some of the writings and whatever at home and he came and read each page. And we were working on WDP, which was a absolutely novel program in Rajasthan and I feel out of all the work that I have done that was a unique program and he was trying to work out as to how this evaluation can help him design that and also to management of that exercise because two things he was very uh, very conscious about being uh, aware of the fact that you uh, need to be listening to others 
whereas for a program coming from the government you tell others. So, the whole thing had to be reversed. So, one non-negotiable he said I will remember every day is that Mandara has taught us that it is most important to listen to them and then uh, think of what can be done, but that also should come from them. So, the statement which he made was can we evolve a program or an approach in which they can plan for themselves. So, we have to plan to let them plan. Now, that was a total uh, reversal. I was getting very clear from your uh, experience that you needed some power structure to protect you. You were very vulnerable at that time and you were constantly thinking of your dreams whereas the reality was something which was being controlled by multiple factors. So, what we learnt in WDP was that you need a, a tripod, you know like this uh, thing with uh, three legs. One was a dreamer and one was the structure which the government should have and one a critical input of research which should go hand in hand. So, these three should go together in any innovation and we must go at a pace which is actually governed by the people, not at the pace at which the government wants. But you want the government, so you see you had completely overlooked the government. So, the structures have to come from the government, that is what we learnt. And uh, also I think it was very clear that uh, the context in which people spoke uh, could uh, was very crucial because if we try to understand their words from where we are standing, we will find everything wrong. So, we had to first get into that kind of context. I uh, remind you of a very interesting incident which happened with your teachers uh, whom, with, uh, whom I had a workshop and we were recollecting. So, I asked them a very stupid question which I see now it is very stupid. I said supposing you had lots of money, supposing you had no fear, supposing you were given power, what would you like to do in the school? So, one or two persons were cautious, they thought the question was silly, but uh, still they would answer. But the third uh, teacher got very angry with me, he says, I do not want to respond. So, I said, what is wrong with it? He said, why are you insisting on things which will never happen and you get us to think that? It is all wrong on your part. So, he gave me hell. Prabha. Prabha. Yes, you remember that? Yes. He gave me hell. And I think it was a very right thing to do because that is how I learnt that we say that we are listening to you, but we are constantly dictating. We are constantly putting this or that on them. So, that was very, very important. WDP uh, to date is the one which learnt maximum from uh, the work that we did because it was Aruna who was a dreamer. It was your work which was there. I was from the research side and Anil Bodia was from the government yeah. side. So, we made a team in which monies had to be minimized so that the government does not come and control it. Yeah. And I wanted to make sure that research should not be published all over because then people will be coming and asking for what is happening. So, I was keeping very low profile, not giving papers in APW, not giving pa and everybody said what kind of a researcher you are. They were very uh, I mean, they were very disappointed with my work. They said, "You, if you are a researcher, you do not follow that game and you are not an activist, but you, you are always with the activists. So, uh, we had a razor's path, which is razor's edge that you are neither an activist nor a real classical researcher, but somewhere running on a path which is yet to be made uh, smoother for future to come, which has over the years much has happened. But I think and uh, WDP was a forerunner for Mahila Samakya. Uh, it was it uh, it was forerunner for Mahila Samakya, and it people in Mahila Samakya needed that kind of rewinding. Ki why did it? You see, we had that Sati case in which the women took charge of the whole uh, uh, movement, and I remember uh, three or four ministers from Delhi were sent by Rajiv Gandhi to participate in this because uh, it, it was an amazing thing and those ministers wanted to go up to the dais and I had stopped them because I said this is led by them. So, we are all sitting on the floor. So, 
uh, the ministers had to sit with us and then the journalists really uh, thought it was a absolute um, delight for them so they went and said how do you like being treated like this you are not going on the days so <laughs> so it was it was an amazing experience but mandara experience was really a training ground for me and with me the a group that we formed it really worked out very well but it was a sad thing that you had to mm-hmm. ma- what did you do for, after that i joined action aid <laughs> yeah because action aid wanted the education yeah. program to come into so, all their programs. yeah action aid wanted but it wanted planning mm-hmm. it wanted systems it wanted predictability mm-hmm. and it wanted to support innovation so all these combined things had to be navigated in various forms but uh, i think very difficult task you you had to shift from action aid also and yeah in action aid we brought in more structure, more structure. but in a sense there that uh, ngo climate was like that at that time yes. anti government anti this anti that you know it so, was more mm. anti than mm. creative creative yeah it was not like mm. see another thing which uh, we learned that if you want a change it has to have a support structure and the support structure has to have power so you can't wish away the government and take it as an enemy so you have to find friends within the system to be able to change the system you cannot change the system this humility had to come to us in a in a hard way that the the partners of course we were very sad when the partners took charge of this and went and presented it in geneva when they said we have done this and we said they haven't done it, but we kept quiet because we knew that unless they are the partners this uh, this whole thing will have no protection whatsoever to aapke vatavaran mein dost hone chahiye jo system mein hai and they were uh, that climate was very important yeah. i also learned from that in a sense of yeah. uh, you know going to the government and then after some years we did a lot of work with the government uh, yeah because you learned primarily from uh, your training which was with david how to creatively handle uh, a situation of deprivation and then how to convert it into power so that was your primary and which we envied a lot <laughs> we said you had the great privilege of doing that and uh, and also with, with teachers with teachers working with the field activists and field teachers actors. so that was very important my uh, in a way regret was that in my work initially i did not take indian intellectual tradition very seriously and in education that was our folly because we in in our kind of activism it was again some ac- anger against what has made the dalits the way they are why has the power structure uh, made them into such uh, uh, you know some have not uh, all kinds so how but do you think we should bring that in yeah yeah i think it is actually we have to reinterpret uh, the our our strengths mm. and this uh, us and them won't do it would be uh, strengths which is for everybody mm. and i had to uh, i have to be thankful to professor daya krishna who taught me to uh, re look at our texts our texts the classical texts as well as western texts as well as actions so i uh, he prescribed a syllabus for uh, honors and post graduate in which the students didn't uh, read the interpreters but they read the originals so i was asked to teach um indian philosophy to the honors group uh, and he said teach it the way you think things should be taught so i looked at the classical text of sankhya karika which was one of the oldest documents and i with my primitive knowledge of sanskrit i was also relying on the text and it uh, really is a very big education i must uh, share with you the myth that was uh, taught to us as the people who struggled against britain that uh, in india the guru means the final word and you can never question when i looked at sankhya karika the whole karika begins with a question 
from the from the shishya from asking the guru to answer so one thing which we learned is that learning has to begin from the one who wants to learn this this was a very major theorem so and this in sanskrit they said jigyasa jab tak gyan ki ichha nahi hai tab tak to gyan ke paas bhi nahi hai aap to usne pucha sawal he asked as to ki sansar mein dukh kyu hai hum dukhi kyu hote hain why is there suffering now that was a classical buddhist question but he asked this ki aap mujhe don't give me the origin just give me the answer ki isko dur kaise kare now that's a relevant question if you are in pain you you are not going to be bothered ki ye kaise shuru hua kya hua you are bothered ki apne isko hatao to dukh kam karo to ye teen prakar ke dukh hain bahut tarah se analyzed hain the student said to the guru i don't want the analysis i want the i want to get rid of it so he said the only answer is gyan then the shishya gets even more angry he said if i have a thorn in my foot what will gyan do i want it to be removed if i am hungry there is no food in the house i want money i want food i don't want to have the gyan then the guru comes out with the real theorem ki wo ekantik aur atyantik aapko mukti nahi dega ye kaata nikal dunga to dusra kaata nahi lagega ye nahi hoga और आपको अभी थोड़े पैसे दे देंगे कि आप खाना ले आओ तो आपको बाद में कमी नहीं होगी ये नहीं होगा तो इन द फाइनल एनालिसिस यू विल हैव टू हैव नॉलेज नाउ नॉलेज ऑफ व्हाट नाउ नॉलेज ऑफ व्हाट अपीयर्स द रेलेवेंट एरिया यू कैन गो टू देन फ्रॉम देयर यू कैन गो टू अ फर्दर एरिया देन यू कैन गो योर ओन कॉम्पिटेंस बिकम्स मोर इट कैन गो मोर सो द मैसेज दैट वॉज कमिंग थ्रू वॉज दैट देर कैन बी नो टीचिंग unless there is learning and there can be no learning unless there is a desire to learn and the teacher has to follow the desire and the capacity to be la- allowing more learning so to open up to open out and to seek knowledge you learn to seek knowledge rather than being given knowledge so that comes from our text it then i found almost all indian texts the second part in indian intellectual tradition which has impressed me a tremendous lot and which i think can help all of us mm-hmm. is that they if they found something wrong in what you were saying mm-hmm. the, and if i had to counter it then i have to first formulate what you are saying so i have to first get into your framework articulate your framework get approval from you ki ha aap ha hum ye keh rahe hain then come and counter it so you can't be ignorant of what they are saying unless it comes to you and you can understand it only when you see from their context their point, their point of view so this is a classical tradition which if we follow see for almost 8 9 centuries india had 6 7 8 9 traditions in which they were constantly in dialogue but now we cannot dialogue with anybody who is not in our framework we lang we use only हमारी भाषा जब तक नहीं बोलेगा हम उसकी बात नहीं सम वो उसको जाने दो वो वो नहीं समझता वो बेवकूफ़ है तो दैट पार्ट इज आई मीन वेन ए चाइल्ड सेज दैट लुक आई थिंक दिस बुक इज़ नो गुड आई डोंट वांट टू रीड दिस देन यू कॉन्ट से दैट यू आर सेंग इट रॉन्ग वाई कॉन्ट यू वाई इज दिस रॉन्ग टू आई हैव टू बी द चाइल्ड एंड फॉर्मुलेट एज टू वाई आई एम फाइंडिंग इट रॉन्ग वो कहते हैं एक वर्ड ही नहीं समझ में आता मुझे क्या बोलते हैं क्या नहीं करते हैं देन वी अंडरस्टूड दैट एक्चुअली वन वी हैड टू एक्सपेरिमेंट यू नो एक एक और सेंटेंस है बहुत अच्छा कि बिना बिना उदाहरण के बिना अभ्यास के कोई सिद्धांत नहीं होता तो यू कैन बुद्धिग्राह्य नहीं होता आप दृष्टांत दो तो सिद्धांत समझ आएगा आप दृष्टांत दो तो सिद्धांत समझ आएगा 